Hello, and welcome to the Client Experience Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Raya Gonzalez, and I'm here with Lady Aga today, Aga Lavrinovich. And she is of Choose Clarity. She is a life coach for moms who are going places. And I welcome you to the show. Raya, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Well, tell us about your business. Tell us about the moms that you serve and um, what you specialize in. I started Choose Clarity uh, about three years ago. And actually, the idea came to me about four years ago but I needed some more training. So I used to be a corporate mom myself. I uh, I had a career in the oil and gas industry. I worked on my own. I had my own business, consulting business. And I hit the wall at some point because it's complex, but long story short, I realized at some point that my career doesn't make any sense to me and my priorities have shifted. and. Finding what I want to do was tricky, but my mission is to support moms just because I see how this culture doesn't support mothers. True. So, yeah, I work with moms. Most uh, most moms I work with are badass moms who either used to have a career before having kids or still are in a career, but they need a change. They need a change. They need to either do something else or set better boundaries in their career and home, or they need to radically change. Oftentimes it comes down to time, as you can imagine for moms, right? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Well, that is something that I was actually listening to a um, podcast and she was talking about how um, we sometimes want to change our mindset and we want to change it so radically overnight. And so we'll say something to ourselves, like, instead of saying, I don't have enough time or I'm too busy, we'll say like, time is abundant and I have all the time in the world and our body and our psyche doesn't accept it because it's so radically different. And so she says, like, do the next believable thought. And so something like, for some people like me, they have enough time or I don't have a lot of time right now, but someday I will, or something like, like a medium thought, you know what I mean? Like a get uh-huh. you there kind of thought. So, but I, but I know that that, you know, the, the time issue is so common, um, for corporate moms for, well, really for all moms, but especially when you're incorporating professionalism into that, it's, it's, it's crazy. So we were talking right before we hit record, we were talking about um, situations where moms who were going full throttle and then they, um, you know, got pregnant or, you know, had had a family and they want to have the same lifestyle that they did before they had kids. And so they're trying to cram in this full throttle career or business and have kids at the same time. And they want to do their kids' lives at full throttle too. And I call this uh, like Pinterest moms. This is what I like to call them. Like the moms who have like, everything is all cricketed and beautiful for their kids' birthday parties. And they're also like a physician's assistant. And they're also, you know, like, so they're wealthy and their kids are perfectly quaffed and their birthday parties have everything perfect. And, you know, so the, the episode is called why moms who are doing it all are lying. It's not meant to put moms down. It's meant to say that we truly can't do it all. We can, but we're not going to do it all well. Um, because we are human beings and we can't do everything at full throttle. So tell me a little bit about what you see with your clients in this um, situation. So this is something what no one can see, but Raya can see me grin here, right? Mm -hmm. Because I really so love it that you brought it up, (laughs) The, the way you brought it up, because when you are a mom, after a few years into a motherhood, you realize that what meant success for you back then may, may not mean the same. You know, you, you, there's success, there's a recalibration, a major recalibration happening in mom's life, few years into, into their children's life. And it doesn't happen overnight, like everything, 
right? So, and I feel like when you didn't take time for the recalibration, like what does success mean to me now? You run into this problem because, you know, type A mom, successful, ambitious, everything organized, suddenly has kids. Geez, kids bring so much more load into our lives. I mean, love, beauty, but also a lot of emotional load, right? Not only emotional load, but also you have to change the diapers and they grow out of diapers. Then they have, you have to manage other things, screen time, uh, making them do chores, whatever, whatever it is. There's always so much. So you have so much more. It's real. You can't do it all in 24 hours like you used to. Plus, you know, the kids, when you have multiple children, they start having their hobbies. They start having their extracurriculars, whatever. And schedules are crazy. It's correct. Right. So I think without the recalibration, like what does success mean to me? What is my priority now? This can change. This can change every year even. And it's fine, but somehow many moms have this problem. And, you know, I know it from my own story that we don't want to let go of the vision uh, image of ourselves we hold, but the image is from pre-children. We miss this yes. woman, you know, wind in the hair, yes. high heels, going somewhere purposefully, right? Yes. <laughs> this woman exists, but in a different in a different. I'm not even sure what to call it in a different dimension, a different yes. She's version. part of us. Definitely. She's, she's part of us, but she has to be incorporated as part of the us that we are now. Yes. And the problem is that women often struggle, Raya, with this, like, should I be this woman with the wind in my hair and success and all that? But then I have to leave my kid with nannies. Or should I be this mom who's at home and no one appreciates her because that's the fact in our society? Um mm-hmm. So these are, these are tough choices for moms. And that's why I feel like my work is not only supporting moms, but also deconstructing patriarchy. Yes. Because we need to support parents in any situation, not just moms. We need to talk about supporting parents, right? To normalize yes. that men have children too. Yes. So the employers may be also taking that into account. And that's going to make it easier for the whole family. Well, you know what was so amazing for the experience? So we had, I got married when I was 19 and my husband was 20. We had babies right away. So I was 20 when I had my eldest and 22 when I had my second. And we had no PTO because we worked in low paying jobs. Um, so I went back to work uh, when I was four weeks postpartum with my first child and five weeks postpartum with my second child. I was not recovered. I was not healed. I was not, you know, I was not ready to go back to work. So physically I was not well. Um, we had to work out childcare issues, you know, all those types of things. And then, you know, we made it through and then we hit our thirties and we decided that we wanted to have one more child. And um, we were just in such a different place, you know, uh, with stability wise and and everything. And um, at that time, my husband works where he works now and they had um, a significant amount of paid time off. And so he was able to take three and a half weeks off when our child was born and I took four months off and I never, I mean, the difference of experience was phenomenal. I mean, even just him taking three weeks off, just having three weeks with the support person, when you as a mom are recovering, I mean, you're a patient, really, you're like, you're recovering from a very traumatic bodily event. And so just having that support was so amazing. But I think also it changed the dynamic um, and the bonding for my husband to be there and be, you know, to experience those early days with our youngest that he missed out on because literally with our first child, she was ill when she was born. So she was airlifted to the NICU and he went with her to the NICU, spent one night in the NICU and had to go to work the next morning. And because we had no paid time off. And so no one was going to pay the rent if he didn't go to work. And so, um, we have to recognize, you know, we are one of the countries that is that are behind in the way that we 
um, you know, provide for parental leave and all those types of things. But we're we're also missing out on these important issues of, you know, of the the bonding and the the changes that take place, identity changes that take place, mental changes that take place when we're shifting from being the woman with the hair flowing through, you know, flowing in the wind to the woman who's got puke on her shoulder, poop in her hands, you know, yes. and is handling her own but body. You know, Raya, before we get to identity, I want to say something to the um, normalizing the fact that we need time for recovery. Because you see, the society the, the, uh, you, you were in and you had your first children in, there was no space for you to really no. recover after your pregnancies, after giving birth, etc. Because there's it is not normalized in the society. But I want to say that this problem is huge because even if you, you know, even if you're an Amazon executive and you have your first kid in your 30s, you're totally well off, you can take all the time off because it's not normalized. People don't know that we need this. You know what I mean? Yes. Even women. So you were able not only because, Raya, you were, that's my assumption here. So tell me if I'm wrong. Not only because you you already had better financial security, you took the time off, but also you live and learn, right? So you yes. saw how hard it was. You knew, oh my gosh, I need more than that. I need more to recover. And you know what I mean? Like, what if someone told you? What if there was a support system for you? What if that idea of mothers recovering would be normalized? Yes. You know, I had the same experience, you know, we had no one here, so we, I didn't have to go to work, but you know, like the idea of, I'm not working now. So I have I had my two stepsons part-time with us and my baby. And I was like, all the time on. And between my children, I had a miscarriage, which I didn't even, you know, I took time to grieve it years later because I didn't know I could. Right. You know, because there wasn't, the culture doesn't really talk about this. These are no. hard experiences. Your body, your say, your soul, your psyche needs some time. And then we come to the other things that are very important too. The identity change, you know, it doesn't happen overnight because even, you know, you have a little baby, it's just so different, right? But yes, but the changes happen in, you know, in, in the healing, personal healing that you go through. Like, look, let's say you go through your healing after having kids and before, but then your kid, your kid hits an age when you had some whatever experience as a child yourself, you get back to it sometimes. It's a yes. nonlinear process. So it's really something that um, motherhood is weirdly underexplored, I think. And I appreciate totally it. agree. And I, so I'm a girl mom. So I have all three, I have three daughters. And um, it's funny because my best friend and I were just talking about this. We both had kids. So she was um, 18 when she got pregnant. I was 19. So she has a daughter who's 22. I have a daughter who's 22. Um, and then I have an 11 year old and she has a 10, 9, 8, 10, 9, 8 year old. So it's just three kiddos in a row. And she, you know, gets really frustrated and she'll like vent and stuff. And I'm really blessed because I only have one, you know what I mean? So I don't have like, I, I'm like, babe, you are outnumbered, like just cave to whatever is happening because you are outnumbered. But it's just interesting the different phases that they hit and we're hitting, you know, adolescence right now. And I'm like, okay, but remember we made it through one time. So like, so we know, we know that we know that this is going to be really hard, but we made it through. And what's on the other side is still hard because now what's, what I'm experiencing is some empty nesting, you know, like my daughter moved out in August of this year. And then my other daughter was living in California and then she moved home because of COVID, but leaving her in California was horrific experience for me. Like I was just sobbing when we were like driving away from the driveway. And my husband said, like, kind of like, what's your problem? Like, he's like, she's, she's fine. I'm like, I don't care about her. And I was like, you don't understand because you're not a mom. And I said, when you, when you're a mom, 
and you've never been a mom before and they put the baby on you, you suddenly realize that the baby is exposed to the whole world and you can't protect the baby anymore. Because that whole time you have been, the baby has been inside of you and you have been able to buffer them from the world, you know? And so, and then you go to kindergarten and you drop them off and then the, the, you hear somebody say poopy or some kind of bad word. And then you're like, oh, they're going to be out in the world and they're going to hear things that I can't control the bubble that they're in. And I said, this is the moment where I drive away from my child who's in another state and I'm leaving her here and I can't control the bubble that she's in. And it was, it was so impactful for me, you know, gratefully she's here and annoying as hell and like up in my biz and telling me what to do because she's 20 and she knows everything. (laughs) But the, the fact of the matter is, is that you go through each of these phases, each of these stages, and there's so many emotions and it's like, where is the space? where we can experience these emotions, but also be a total professional um, in a patriarchal world where we're not allowed to have emotions or if we have emotions, they can't. I mean, like I'm a crier, so I'm like, I I guess I have to be in business for myself because otherwise I would piss everybody off because I would be like, I'm going to have some feelings right now, you know? But I think, you know, we can have this... um, this juxtaposition of like what we feel we need to be to be professional, whether that's a business woman in corporate, whether that's working not in corporate, just in a regular company or somebody who is running her own business and the face that we have to show. Um, And then also the frustration of keeping up with the Joneses and Or even like, I mean, even if you're like, fuck the Joneses, I'm just going to raise my kid how I want to raise my kid, which reality is we're going to be still keeping up with the Joneses because we do care what people think about our parenting style. But some of us have different levels of caring about that. Um, But, you know, like there's this all this pressure to be the perfect mom and all this pressure to be the perfect professional. And then we put all this pressure to be both and then all this pressure to be a housekeeper and all this pressure to be a cook and all this pressure to be a perfect wife or partner or or compound it all if you're single. Good God. You know what I mean? Like, so Mm -hmm. it's just this, uh, you know, this pressure cooker of things that happen both mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I, I mean, I... I can only imagine, you know, what you see with your clients. Yeah, you know, Brian, this already comes down to you're right. You know, you're totally right. It's it's a um, it's a huge pressure professionally and parenting. Oh my God, you know, so easy to be judged, but it all comes down to connection with 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 yourself, really. The better connected you are, and this sounds maybe trivial, but really it's it's some work and it's, it can cause profound results that you can, instead of trying to keep up with Joneses, you can just really try to keep up with yourself. What, what, yeah. what are your goals? What do yeah. you want for your family? What is your authentic expression? Because, you know, the pressure makes us really look outward and like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to say to my child. This is my kid is supposed to, you know, like all the ego games, like, yes. you know, okay, what do I do to send my kid to Ivy League University, right? Third grade, okay, what do I do, right? So this kind right. of games versus seeing yourself as a person, which allows you then to see your children as a, as people. Yes, which they're amazing. And, you know, and, they're amazing. Exactly. Yeah. If only we wouldn't fuck them up, you know? I know. Oh my God, right? But it's not even, but it's not even about our really about our mistakes as parents, but about how the culture works, Raya, because I know the keeping up with Jones is, is a huge thing. That's why it's, you know, the first thing, you know, really, um, the main thing I work on with women who come to me for help, for support is self compassion. Yes. In, in many, you would be surprised, react, oh my gosh, what, what do you mean? Like, this is so self-indulgent. I need to take care of my family. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you do. But 
if you if you are compassionate with yourself, if you accept yourself, it's so much easier to accept your kids. So I'm reading this book and I I've right now the author's name is escaping me. And this is just some light reading, but it's called complex PTSD. Um, but the whole point of the book is talking about the different PTSD responses and then how, and you could replace CP, CPTSD with childhood PTSD. So it's really talking about how these PTSD triggers happen because of the way we were reared as children. And one of the things of the recovery methods, it said self-mothering. If you did not have a mother that you felt was compassionate enough to emulate what it would look like to be compassionate, compassionate, that you have to find ways to mother yourself. You have to be compassionate to yourself because they call it a developmental arrest that you had a trauma in the way that you were raised so that you didn't feel like you could be compassionate with yourself, that you didn't feel that you had the self-worth. And so then it boils over to the next generation because you're setting the example that you can't be compassionate with yourself, which especially like for me, I have always been hyper aware that everything I say and do about myself, I'm emulating that. And, you know, I'm, I'm showing that to my children for how they treat themselves, which is like, talk about worrying about fucking them up because I, you know, like, I, you know, I'm just like, okay, which decision, which decision is going to fuck them up less? You know what I mean? Like, that's basically it. But you know, Raya, you, you are going to make mistakes as parents because, you know, kids are our precious treasures the most precious treasures are our children. So we have we have some fears, you know, assimilated with children, what's going to happen to them, you know, leaving them in California, sending them to school, them being bullied and going through heartbreak, right? This always crushes us. So we're going to say, we're going to act out of fear and say something wrong, do something wrong. But this is not the point. The point is to be able to be authentic, to always, you know, get back to the basics, to your core and say, okay, this is what just happened. Let's talk. Yes. Because this is, you know, we, no one is really perfect. Like, this is impossible. And also you said something important, Raya. The, you know, the book is great and I love it. And I feel like everyone has experienced some trauma, you know, some yes. major trauma. You can't even compare it. Because I want to tell you, self-compassion is such a rare commodity. Yes. Especially for women. Yeah. Well, here I'm reading this book and it's helping me understand myself so much, but I'm also seeing the things that I've done to my children through the eyes of this book. And so I'm both understanding myself and judging myself at the same time. And then I get to the section where it talks about self-compassion. I'm like, okay, let's, let's breathe for a moment. Let's, let's understand that I, I love and care about myself enough to understand why I am the way that I am. And let's understand that I love and care about my children enough to recognize when I make mistakes, own it, apologize for it, and try to do better next time. You I know, I think you. that's that's the bottom line because I'm going to mess it up again. And it's yes. been, you know, it's been really interesting to have women as children um, you know, having my oldest child say, you know, I learned everything I needed to know about working hard from you and dad. Like, mm -hmm. I just, I just see and understand the struggle that, you know, and she's like, I knew that, um, I knew that I didn't want to have children at the age that you did, because I saw how, how much you had to struggle. And, um, and I respect your work ethic. You know, you still, Raya, you're already in, in, like, implanting them, the, the self-compassion into their lives because they already understand you. They see how hard you worked. And also talking about self-compassion, I really invite everyone to step back or like rather talking about fuck up, uh, fucking up our children. Right. Yes. Let's step away from it. And like, look, we are all we not like you're not a person who is. Like, you know, if you once or twice or five times, whatever, behave like an asshole, it's not really you only. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not to be to, to find an excuse. Oh, that's not my fault that I'm an asshole. No. But if you step away and you realize 
that actually, you know, you are a cause and effect of your parents, their traumas, the environment they were in, the things in life they went in, the grandparents, and there's a whole ancestral, I mean, yes. this is not even so esoteric. This is real because everyone's traumas and anxieties and whatever unresolved things, they come onto us. And it's not really our fault, you know? Right. So I always tell this to people because it kind of helps you. Like, you know, if someone behaves the way you would rather have this person not behave, also it gives you some more compassion. Okay, it's not his fault. This person is suffering right now. Right. Oh, that's definitely something I've been practicing right now is like, is really yeah. having compassion for other people. It's hard, but it, but you know, you, you have to talk yourself through it sometimes yeah. like, wow, that person is a jackhole and they're probably really hurting right now. So I'm going to have compassion. <laughs> but, but you know, Raya, this is not separate from self-compassion. Not at all. The more compassion you, you can have for yourself, the more ease you can find in the situations when someone annoys you. It's true. It's true. Right? <laughs> yes. Talk to me a little bit about um, prioritization and um, finding your flow in business when you have so much on your plate and you're trying, you're trying to do your best, you know, to raise your kids in a way that you're present and you're um, a good influence for them and you're instilling the values that you want for them, but you also have ambition. You also want to do things with your life. You also want to flip your hair back and clap your heels across the floor, you know? And so I think there is this, there is, um, an off balance on purpose type of thing, but it all does come down to how do the pieces fit together? So, what do you recommend in order to be able to accomplish a little bit of both? Okay, so here's my golden method for balance. That's how Love I it. do it. No, Throw it out the window? Just, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, what I've noticed is, you know, I, I know how, how much struggle this can cause because I am struggling myself. Even though I'm doing this for work, I help people find joy and ease. I have work that is, re I'm, I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate about this work, supporting moms, talking to women, getting inspired, inspiring. And I have two children. They have school at home for one year now, over one year now. Uh, they are in a third and a first grade. My husband is working from home too. And my most effective way is setting your priorities. So here's my priority. My personal priority is to be a kind person. And only I know what to do to be a kind person because I really, you know, I'm, I'm spending all this time with my family at home. So this is my first priority. I don't want to be an asshole. Right. And, and here's the thing. If I can achieve that, that I'm in some kind of internal balance, then I can be more at ease with, with all my tasks that I have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so first focusing on your own needs, you know, physical and spiritual, for me, that means, for instance, if I don't exercise first thing in the morning, then the whole day goes by and I don't exercise. And I do need exercise. I'm this kind of person. I have too much energy. So <laughs> so for me, I have to do that. I have to exercise in the morning. I meditate. If I meditate in the morning versus I don't, I see the difference. Mm -hmm. So those things I do. Other thing is sleep. Very um, underrated, especially for moms. Guilty. Especially for moms like me, Raya, um, perhaps like you. Oh, who, so guilty. We remember how it was to never sleep, right? Yes. Right. But, you know, in your 20s is different than your 40s. I'm not sure if you, you are in your 40s. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm 40, I'm 45 almost right now. So it's, a you know, you can, I can't do it without sleep. I need at least seven hours of sleep. Otherwise, I don't have my patience that I wish I had. So yeah. these kind of basics, you know, like fuel yourself first, nourish yourself first, and then everything is easier falling into place. Because, and let's not fool ourselves. It's not like everything I have, I want to do every day, I manage to do. Because, you know, life happens. Like last Monday, I had to take my kid to um, urgent care at Children's. 
you know, nothing happened, no broken bones likely, but you know, you know, three hours are out of my schedule, Sally. So, you know, if you first take care of yourself, you have enough sleep, enough rest, whatever you, your body and soul needs, then whatever comes your way, you can deal with it easier, right? So true. It's so true. And I think too, another thing that I've found is like, um, intentional, um, off balance intentionally. So like, for example, we were talking about how I, uh, batch podcasts. So today is a, like a crazy day for me. So I started today at about 5.00 AM and I won't end tonight until probably about 9.00 PM because uh, aside from podcasting, I do, I have another side of my business that I'm doing. And so, but it's one day of the month that I have this sort of crazy day and I have a sign on my office door that right now that says podcast, you know, and so, um, people know in the house, this is the day that mom's going to be insane and she's going to collapse when, so just don't even talk, just don't talk to mom today. Like, don't like, if you see her come out of her shell, come out of her room, like, just, just don't look, don't look, just keep walking. It's fine. She'll be fine later, you know? Um, but you, so it's, so it's those decisions where you say, I'm going to be off balance, but it's going to be on purpose. And, um, and I think that you can do the same thing where you, um, well, for example, yesterday I had to have quite a few, um, like nothing major, but I had to have quite a few like x-rays and, you know, following up like medical appointment type things. So I batched them all together in one day. Cause I was like, well, if I'm going to have to go down by the hospital to all these clinics, I might as well just do it and, and like take basically a whole day off or like a three quarters of a day off. And so again, off balance, I'm not working in the way that I normally would. I'm putting my health and my body first, but I'm doing it intentionally. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where there's never going to be a day where I'm going to perfectly do my work and I'm going to perfectly be a mom and I'm going to perfectly do my housework. There's actually never going to be a do day where I perfectly do my housework because my house is a mess. Um, <laughs> thank you for saying this all, Raya, because, you know, this is the reality for most of us and most of us strive to be perfect somewhere in, you know, like either professionally, but there's always some, you know, loose ends. There are always yes. some loose ends and that's fine. And I think the art here is to accept it. Yes. Gracefully accept it because honestly, this is how life goes, you know? Well, this, so I did college, um, so I, I took my uh, bachelor's program for 12 years because I went one class at a time. So I worked full time and I had two babies 23 months apart and I was in college and people would say to me all the time, how do you do it all? How do you do it? And I'm like, I don't like, I literally don't like something suffers. Like the kids don't get enough attention or I get a C in a class or I'm a crap employee, like somewhere or I don't sleep. You know, like somewhere something's going to fall short because I am a human being. And I, and I, my answer was always the same. Like so people would always ask me, how do you do it all? And I'm like, I don't, I don't do yeah. it all because I, you just, you just possibly, it's just not possible to do it all. And people need to be more honest about the fact that there's a giant laundry pile or, you know, that we ate at McDonald's four times this week or whatever it might be that you, you did to make it through, but you made it through another week and everyone's still standing and your business is still in business or your job is still going. Or if your job is not going, you made it through another, another week and you're still here. You know what I mean? I mean, there's so many people that have lost their jobs or have had transition or are trying to recreate and re new themselves in a way right now. Um, this is such a brave and exciting time to do that in, but it's also very scary, you know? Yeah, and so, um, mm -hmm. it's so trying to do that and like, um, be a mom at the same time. It's this just delicate dance that we do, but yes. sometimes it looks like a really awkward, um, like, tango or something you know exactly exactly so i think the acceptance and the openness is important because you know everyone is different also even within group of moms there are some moms who really you know are not 
resonating with the idea of re, you know being with the children and taking care of the daily whatever it is they prefer to delegate that and just spend mm -hmm. some time with the children after work and that's fine and this is as fine as different moms who decide not to go back to work because they really find this time with their children too precious yes you know and like there's some parents who go crazy to finish bachelor in one or two years but there are some parents who, you know, that's what, what works for you. And I think that's important to know it because many people, right? And I applaud you for taking 12 years and not doing it all because this worked for you. Yes. Right. But there are many people who really like look at the Joneses and try to keep up. And this is so out of alignment and it causes lots of stress for people because there's some expectations. And again, but this is about the patriarchal culture that there yes. you know, doesn't recognize that people have families, no matter men or women. It's true. Know? It's true. And it's sad. I mean, I I have to say that the the other side effect or the other kind of different thing about, you know, me having children in two batches, basically, you know, like having them so far apart. So there's um, my oldest two are 10, like the oldest is 10 and a half years older than the youngest. And so my husband works swing shift. So he actually was her primary caregiver when I went back to work for most of her day. And then she would go to her godmother who only had boys. So she was basically her daughter. Like she was treated her like her daughter for two hours. And then I would pick her up. And so it was like, she got spoiled all morning with daddy and they got to go and get muddy and go and do fun things. And then she would go to her godmother's house who would like give her a bath and they would watch Tinkerbell and make popcorn. And then I would pick her up and it was just like, she just got constantly loved on all day long. And then, you know, and then I would pick her up. And so it felt so good. It felt so different than it did um, when the girls, when my big girls were little, because everything felt so pressured and we didn't have support. And that's a big thing too. I also think that social media um, can be really beautiful in the fact that um, like I have a group, I live in Maple Valley and we have a group called Maple Valley Girls Chat. And this, we don't, most of us don't really know each other in person, like we would recognize each other, but we just are in this group and we can go in there and be like, my son is a total fucking asshole. Like, I just want to throw him in the garbage today. You know what I mean? But we also know that that person loves their son, like would die for their son. But sometimes you need a safe place where you can be like, you know, I, I can't, you know, I, I cannot take this kid one more moment. I, have yes. I just want, like, I just can't, you know? And so I didn't have that. I didn't have um, maternal support. I didn't have, you know, what I did have was I had a teenage sister who helped me with the girls and that was good. That was nice to just body double, you know, like if I'm going to the grocery store and I have a two-year-old and a seven-month-old, you know, like you, it's hard to manage all of it without another person there. Um, but nowadays we have this emotional support where we can either call a friend or we can go online and anywhere in the world and find somebody with a very similar situation. And there's people like you where if we're, if I'm in a situation where I'm like, I really know I need more clarity in where I'm going with this. I need to get back to me, but I don't even know what that means to get back to me. Yes. And then I can go to someone like you and say like, I want to find me again, but I don't know. Like, I wasn't even really sure. Like I'm thinking the identity crisis I had. I mean, I was obviously so young. I was still a child when I got married. And I remember changing my name and being so excited about that. And then remember looking at my name and th thinking like, I didn't even know who the other person was. So who's this person? And then I was pregnant so soon and I was a mom and I was like, I don't, I wasn't even sure what the married me was. And now I'm a mom. Like, what is this person? And I think we go through so many phases in our lives that it, they can really having someone like you who can just say, okay, let's just sit for a minute. Let's just breathe into this. Let's just say, you know, let's just be present with who you are right now. And then, then sort of break it down, you know, and, and, and learn to meet yourself, you know, yes. that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Like I'm 42 this year. 
And I would say that 2020 was the year where I introduced myself to myself. So we're dating right now. Um, Jury's out, but so far so good. She's a little hot. So, um, you know, but (laughs) I love um, it, right? I love it. uh, But I think, you know, I'm just learning. What do I like? What do I like apart from my children? I love my children apart from being a mom, apart from being a business owner, I want to answer the question. So what do you, you know, so tell me about yourself without saying, well, I'm a business owner. I'm a mom. I don't know what I like. You know what I, th- just this weekend, I bought markers and, and uh, coloring books with mandalas. And I spent three hours coloring a mandala because I just was like, I need to this reading this book and my sister is like making fun of me that I'm reading a book about PTSD, but I'm like, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's explaining, it's making sense to my brain. It's like stimulating my, my educational, you know, like I'm a learner. Like it, I feel good when I'm reading it. I never, I haven't read in so long, you know? And so these are the things where we, yes, we are business women. Yes, yeah. we are business owners or corporate, you know, corporate women. Yes, we are mothers. We are wives. We are partners. We are partners to ourselves. But do you know who you are? And I can't confidently answer that yet. But I'm, I, the goal that I set a month ago was that I want to fall madly in love with myself. That's like, a lovely goal. Well, yes. Yeah, I love it. And you know what? You may not have some indefinite or like definite quest- uh, answer to this question. You may not. B- because, you know, you, you live and, and learn and you change. Maybe something new will come to your life tomorrow. Yes. And it's not. And really the only um, constant, it can be how connected you are with yourself. And I love that you bring this all up, uh, Raya, because first of all, I want to say about social media, I mean, it's great because people get to know that there are other moms, et cetera, et cetera, who are struggling in a similar way. But I still think that there is much more pressure on perfection on social media yes, than this is on, true. on reality. I mean, and I, I am so happy to hear that you have these moms in Maple Valley because we need this. Apart from self-compassion is like the second thing community of like-minded moms to support each other this is fundamental this is so important that you can say all these things and no one will judge you yes that you can learn from each other that you can be accepted that you can belong because you know it's the the identity itself you know coming back to that raya you know imagine you you have before kids your situation is different. For instance, before having kids for me and many of my clients, I already had like a, I was 35. So you had a whole life. Yeah, I was, I had like over 10 years of a career in the oil and gas industry. I traveled, I earned a lot of money and I over identified with it. And many people over identified. And you know, if you have kids early, you can also over identify yes. with things you had before. And I think the beautiful thing about having children is that they teach you so much. They teach you, you make all the mistakes and you see that whatever you do, your actions have such a huge impact on other human beings, right? Mm -hmm. So you really want to think twice before you do something. So, you know, most people experience like a huge changes in their level of compassion generally. And uh, maybe changes in priorities. They don't know how to tackle it. The culture is not so, you know, uh, the culture itself didn't figure it out yet for them. But but imagine what we can do as moms, you know, having the badass person before kids, the badass person that has kids and does it all, and the badass person who gets on the journey of drawing mandalas and reading books mm-hmm. and dating herself. Like, imagine, and, you know, and, I love that you do it, Raya, the creativity. You know, I want to also say that, that, you know, women, we talk about how uh, moms, you know, we need self-care. You know, if you say self-care to average woman, she thinks about going doing her nails. But what about other things? Like, you know, like 
Are you happy? What's joyful for you? Do you have enough sex? Mm -hmm. How's your pelvic floor? You know, these things, let's normalize it all. You know, this, these are like facts of life. Like, you know, family is the most important thing to, for us humans, right? Because we, that's how we procreate and, you know, and yes. And yet in a workplace, it's not normalized. Suddenly men have to, you know, corporate men, they have to pretend they have no families and everything is on moms. So moms suffer, et cetera. Yes. And then moms, yeah, the moms need self-care. Let them go do their nails. But what about their sex life? What about the pleasure? What about the creativity? Mm -hmm. What about them experience joy? Yes. Right? So yes. I, I love this. You know, I love working with women because I really like to make it no bullshit. Like, let's let's just, you know, connect and see what what can be instead, you know? <laughs> Well, and ultimately the bottom line is, as we explore and we find out what it is that we like and what it is that we are and who we are, we are going to find more and more of this balance that we seek because like you said, your goal is to be kind. Well, yes. how can you be kind if you don't do something that's fun? Or how can you be kind if you're not kind to yourself? That's how right. Can you that's be kind if you're not addressing your own needs. See, these things yeah. are so important. And then you can't, and all of that spills over to work too. If yes. your, oh, yeah. your home life is not well, then your work life will not be well. Yeah. Especially, you know, in business like mine uh, and yours perhaps too, you know, I need certain level of inspiration. Yes. Right. So we can't just work, like do the, it's not like we fill in some Excel spreadsheets. We have to create things and yes. they don't come out from an, from a, you know, um, crashed heart. Yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, I well, love I this. To, I love I this conversation. Yeah. Go one for one it. One thing, Raya, for moms who, who are listening to us, moms, entrepreneurs or other moms, the, the one thing that I always tell my clients is to flip their list because, you know, when my clients come to start work with me, they have their to do lists, mm -hmm. you know, they usually have super <laughs> badass, very organized and everything. And they come to me to help them get organized. But the problem is they have too much to yes. do. And what I tell them is to flip their list, which means, you know, how everything is on top of your list, like, you know, call the plumber, schedule the kids do the work, this meeting, blah, blah, blah. And on the end of the list, when everything is done, then you're going to do like, you know, start the you whatever Tai Chi Gong classes you wanted to do, or like, you know, start the yoga course or listen to something that you really wanted to listen for yourself. Right. Yeah. Like go for a walk. This on the bottom. But the problem is that this like the top never get done, never get yes. done, you know, so it's you never get place. to the bottom. Yeah. So flip. So meaning, like for me, it is truly this, like if I want to work out, I need to do it in the morning because if I don't, I won't do it. And when I worked out, like my day is already, bam, amazing. So flipping the list is really getting the stuff that you really need to be the person you want to be and doing, doing it first and prioritizing it, meaning do it frequently. Yes. And doing it first is like the fundamental thing. So flip your list and do it first and prioritize it. I love it. I usually ask what is the one thing that people can take away, but that's it. That's it right there. It. Flip the list. I think that's so, so important because the, the honest to God truth is the top of the list. It always just rotates anyways. The bottom stays yeah. the same. So Exactly. And the pro exactly right. And the problem is that there are certain things that you have to do anyway. So, you know, you have to feed your children, you know, you have to pay your bills, you have to do certain things that you do every day. So you're going to do it regardless, right? Yes. And um, and this kind of things that you really want to have it to be the person you want to be, it's easy to not do them and then you're grumpy. Yes. So, yes. First. <laughs> Well, um, we're going to include all of your contact information in our show notes. I would encourage any of our listeners to reach out to Aga if you are feeling inspired, um, if you are wondering about how you can reconnect with your inner mom, your inner self, your inner woman, and choose clarity for yourself. I would find Lady Aga. She's the best. So um, check our show notes, connect with her, um, let her know that you listened to the episode and 
Aga, I just thank you so much. You know, I adore you. I think you're amazing. And the work that you're doing is really, really important because we are leading the way for the next generation. And so we have to break the narrative with our generation so that the next generation can lead a healthier lifestyle. Raya, thank you so much. This is all mutual. I adore you too. And I love what you do. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life, Raya. Thank you for oh. having me. <laughs> all right. Well, this has been another episode of the Client Experience Revolution podcast. I am Raya Gonzalez, your host, and we will see you next time.